Welcome back. In this video, I'm going to show you how I built a new desk to improve the functionality of my home studio. So the desk that I'll be coming from is one that I had also built. It was designed with a very specific set of hardware in mind. And over the years, as more pieces have come and gone, the design has become less and less user friendly. Digital art being the primary focus of my home studio, I needed to design a desk that would allow the pen display to be accessed conveniently and stably. And with that in mind, I started drawing up the new desk. Starting from the base, I found a pair of legs from Uplift that will give the desk some flexibility and also some stability when fully extended. Moving up to the real focus of the build, the desk surface. The dual layer design allows for a wide keyboard tray as well as plenty of surface area to keep stability for the pen display. A nice side bonus is that I will have plenty of space in the back to tuck away some cables as well as additional storage on the side. A heavy monitor arm will be used to attach the pen display to the desk to allow even more adjustability in its location and angle. For the desk surface, I chose to go with one and a quarter inch pine that I found at a local big box store. I made the choice to go with pine due to its lighter weight and also much lower price compared to hardwood. I plan to get the most out of this desk, but I know that I'll be drilling holes through it and will most likely encounter elements of the design that I'll want to improve or change down the road, and not spending a premium price for a hardwood makes all of those things a little easier to justify. After selecting the straightest boards for the top surface of the desk, I went ahead and trimmed them roughly to length, making sure to give myself a few inches on either side so that I could trim them to the exact size once the glue up was complete. Once trimmed, I laid out the boards and added some reference marks for the coming glue up. I don't have access to a proper jointer, so I plan on using some dowels to help keep the boards aligned and flat during the glue up. To help center the dowels, I took a gamble on a DIY solution and used the laser cutter to create an acrylic centering jig. I didn't have a ton of faith in the jig, however, so I took some time and tested it out on just a few of the boards to see how well it worked. It works surprisingly well for being made out of acrylic, however towards the end of the project it definitely started to wear out and not all the holes were exactly centered. I was satisfied with the test so I went ahead and drilled the rest of the holes. I also cut all the dowels to the correct size and then prepped the area for the glue up. Once glue was applied, it was a bit more difficult to align all the boards together than I had previously planned. I ended up fitting half of the table together at first, hoping connecting the two halves would be easier. It definitely was not. It took several tries, but in the end I was able to get the two halves aligned, but not before making kind of a mess and getting wood glue everywhere. Thank you. 
Once the glue had dried, I removed the clamps and just did a quick check to see how flat the glue up actually ended up being. For store-bought non-jointed lumber, I was very pleased with how this turned out. There's a couple of spots that will need some attention later on and a little bit of misalignment from the dowels, but all in all, I was very happy. Once I stowed the top, I moved on to the lower section of the desk, following the same steps as the previous glue up. The one exception made here is that I decided to build the lower surface of the desk in three sections, the back and the two side wings. By building it this way, I was able to create a nice finished gap where the keyboard tray will eventually slide into. Before gluing the two side wings onto the back, I ran both of them through the table saw to finish their inside edge. I then carefully measured the width of the keyboard tray and then marked where the side wings would attach to the back. Once that was done, it was just a matter of following the same glue up procedures as before. Now that both sections were glued and dried, I needed to do a little bit of work to clean them up and get them ready for finishing. As I mentioned before, the centering jig worked well in keeping the glue up flat, but there was still some minor alignment issues that I wanted to smooth out. After struggling for a few hours with the extremely wobbly sawhorses and some hand planes, I was able to move on and hit both the top and the bottom with a few passes of a belt sander and finished up with a random orbit sander. With that done, I moved on to some of the last fabrication of the project, the keyboard tray and the risers. The construction of the keyboard tray was fairly straightforward. I decided to save some time and use a piece of pre-glued one by stock that I had on hand from another project. I cut it into three parts, the tray itself and the two sides that the drawer slides will attach to. I used some pocket screws to attach the sides to add a little bit more strength to the tray but the downside was that it left some visible holes that I needed to fill. With the keyboard tray done, I finished up by cutting out the risers. These four risers will separate the top and bottom sections of the desk. 
Once cut to length, off camera I drilled four holes on the inside pair of the risers to allow cables to pass through. There was one final step that needed to be completed before moving on. The top and bottom layers were still rough cut and needed a quick trim to get them to their final dimensions. Once complete, I moved forward to finishing and final assembly. I wanted to paint the risers black and to keep the wood grain from showing through the paint, I coated them with a thin layer of wood filler. So I started the assembly process by adding part of the drawer slides to the inside of the risers. Adding the slides now was necessary so I could make sure I would miss any of the mounting screws when drilling the holes needed to attach these risers to the top and bottom of the desk. Figuring out how to attach the risers to the desk was one of the parts of the process that I was dreading the most. The problem was that I didn't want to screw through the top of the desk leaving a visible screw or a hole that would needed to be filled. So the solution I came up with was to attach the outside risers to the top of the desk first. I drilled a set of holes in the bottom of the riser stopping with about an inch of stock left. This would allow me to attach the risers to the underside of the top of the desk without screwing it in from the top or using a crazy long screw. I then got the inner risers ready to attach to the bottom so that they would be precisely where they needed to be for the keyboard tray to work smoothly. Before attaching them, I made a quick template of the mounting holes out of painter's tape. This will be important later for attaching these risers to the top of the desk. The top and bottom halves of the desk were now ready to be attached. But before that happened, I wanted to move the desk into its final location while the halves were still easy to manage. Once in place, it was time to attach the two halves together. Using the template I had made out of painter's tape, I was able to drill through the bottom of the desk to expose the mounting holes that are in the risers. With everything ready, I used some screws and attached the two halves together. With the two halves assembled, all there was left to do now was to build the legs and reconnect all the hardware.
The desk turned out great. I've been using it for several months now and it's made working at the pen display for long stretches much more enjoyable. The only downside was that shortly after completing the desk, I got back into working with traditional media and there isn't a whole lot of open space for pen and paper. The solution there I think might be to design a second desk that can fold away when not in use. If you're interested in seeing that, subscribe as I will definitely be exploring that idea in future. If you want to see some of the content that I've produced while using this desk, click on the screen to check out those videos.